So to begin with on the screen, uh, what have you got there? You've got the uh, Securing Plus uh, video, and uh, you can see I've gone up to the top right-hand corner and clicked on the cross, um, because I, I'm starting to think about structure. And I've added a new section there, and um, I've just put the section, I've changed the order of the sections and put it before because I've decided that I'd like that really loud section that I've already created to be at the end of my piece. Um, so I've made this new section, section B, and uh, I've now gone into that section right at the beginning and created a, a new smart piano. The reason I've done that is because I, I want to create some really soft string chords. And Just turn that down a bit so you can hear me as well. Um, so I'm just recording in some string chords there. Um, and for the moment, I'm trying to make those sounds of those chords as long as I possibly can, because I, I want to contrast from what comes later. So I want to create something that kind of has a, I want the sound to be very smooth at the beginning, very soft. So that's what I'm aiming for here. So I've recorded it in to start with, and now I've gone inside, and look what I'm doing there. I've, I've gone into select it and then press the edit button, and uh, I'm making all the notes longer so that all of the chords last for the whole of a bar um, or three beats. I'll do that with all of them, and then uh, and then I'll listen to it again in a minute. Okay, so did I work? Did I fix it? Lovely. So you've really, you've got this nice sense of flow through this now. You can just hear the melody start to come in after that uh, at the end because that's the other thing you've got to think about with this project. It's not just about creating three sections. You've got to think about how they're going to flow together. That's going to be really really important. Um, so numbers of bars in these sections, you're going to have to think about it a little bit to um, imagine how you're going to make that fit. So there's eight bars of chords, um, but the end of bar eight, you've got those new melody notes that come in for the loud section at the end. So something to have a think about. You can see I've finished the string section there and then I've tapped on the strings icon and clicked duplicate. It's created me another one underneath. But you can see I'm playing the grey boxes at the bottom there instead of the white ones halfway up. And that's just giving me a bass note. Um, and you, you might remember that from when we did the iPad music production project in year seven, that we played the bass guitar notes just along that bottom row. So I'm doing the same as I did before. Um, so I've recorded it in, just recorded it by playing the notes um, on the smart piano. I'll just lengthen those notes so that they smoke, they flow smoothly with what we've got in the string part above. Okay, let's see what happens next. I was probably having to think about something then. Right, I've gone into percussion. So I'm trying to create something that um, almost has a, a like a, a kind of a ping or ding type sound. So I'm looking for a cymbal. So I've loaded the same kit as before. And I'm just trying things out. I'm trying to make it sound like I'd like it to sound. So I'm going to record that. I've chosen just the rhythm of one at the start of each bar. Um, just again to keep it simple. It doesn't have to be a big complicated rhythm. Uh, I'm, it just has to be enough so that it creates this sense of atmosphere. So I've quantized it to one quarter. It's not quite the sound that I'm looking for though, so I've gone into the edit instrument and I'm trying these other ones out. <laughs> there's some funny sounds in there, but there's nothing, there's nothing really that um, I was looking for. It's not the type of sound. So, so again, I'm thinking about these details. So I've gone back into acoustic and I'm, I'm going to go back to the acoustic drum kit that I started with because actually it's like the bell of a cymbal I'm really looking for I think that kind of sound um, so I've changed the sound I'm going to go back in and double tap and go to edit 
and on the drum kit you see all those instruments down the left hand side so I'm listening for the next one there it is that's the sound that I'm looking for so I'm going to grab the notes that I've made from the top and I'm going to drag them to that space by the way to drag and select things you just hold your finger on the screen until a square appears and then drag around what you want to select I want them to be a bit louder than that so I tapped on velocity and I can turn them all up so it doesn't have to be very loud it just has to add something to the overall sound that you're creating Okay, so it looks like what's going on with that section now. Oh, I'm ready to make another section because I've got a new idea. So I've made another section, then I've, I've shuffled them around. I'm holding down the three lines at the end and just pulling them up like you would change the order of something on another app. Um, so, so I've done that. But then I've thought I might have made a mistake here because that first section is only seven bars long. If you listen to it, we don't quite get all the chords. one more here and even though it's right it it goes back to the beginning so that's in the wrong place so I've realized um, that 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 section isn't right watch how I fix it because I can see the the end bit stuck on the end over there so I'm going to move that along by one bar and then grab that bit from the end and copy and paste it into the gap because that's my bit that's missing that's fixed it just turning the strings down a little bit there because I wanted it to be more gentle we've got another problem there because the phrase doesn't quite finish so I'll go back into here and I can in, increase the section length to eight bars instead of seven. Watch what happens with that. So it does that and then I can grab hold of those, those two bars at the end and pull them back. And then that completes it. Okay, so I've got three sections now that all flow nicely together. So now I'm thinking about, well, what else could I add? to that second section and I'm going to add some picked guitar so I'll just start by practicing to see what pattern I might create those are called broken chords where you play the notes separately in the guitar on those those first two parts. I've gone this quantize, it's quantize one eighth. You can quantize that type of guitar playing because we're not strumming, it's the strumming you can't quantize because you lose the effect. Now you see what I'm creating here, I've clicked on master effects at the bottom, I've gone to cathedral and I'm now changing the amount of reverb um, that is on each of these tracks. So imagine that you're standing in the middle of York Minster and you play the guitar it'll, it'll, the sound will go everywhere it just creates, stops the intensity of being quite so much, it gives it a bit of space that's what that's good for so essentially I'm placing all these instruments into that space now Anytime you add amounts of reverb or you change the mix, you must be listening to it when you do it because you won't know the effect it's having on it. I 
I've just soloed the parts by pressing the yellow headphones there so that I can really focus in on the individual tracks and then listen to them together. Okay, you can see I'm ready for another instrument. What am I going to go for next? It's a smart piano and I'm going to play a softer melody but I'm not going to play it on a piano as you'll see. So I'm going to change it to a different instrument. You can see I slid the keyboard along so that I had more notes I could get to the higher octave. And I've changed it now, I've changed it to a flute. I want to put more reverb on that. You can hear that reverb now. It's a bit too much, turn it down a bit. Just make sure the keyboard's in the right place so I can get to that D at the top. I just added a few extra notes there. That was a kind of a stylistic thing. It was a, a melodic idea I'd heard from the film. And I thought, oh, I want to recreate that. start to see the detail that I'm thinking about in here of all the different details of, uh, of musical parts um, within what we call the texture. The overall texture is the layers of music and how they're working together. I want to listen to it back there. There was some rhythm that wasn't quite in time. listening to it through, checking that contrast. Now I'm going to go into edit it, because it's not in time and I'm looking at the notes there thinking there's lots of errors there. Now I'm particularly, the, cha the challenge with this is those tiny tiny notes that I've added um, I don't know whether they're called demi, they might be demi semi quavers. You would need a different quantized value for those, something that's much more detailed. But the problem with that is then you've got to p perform with even more accuracy, or else you've got to move things around as I'm doing here. And, and I try to do it like that, but it's taking a long time. So I just think, you know what I might do? I might just go back to the quantized value that most of it's on, which is one eighth. And then you'll see what happens to those little notes in a minute. They'll squish together. Watch this. So you can't even hear them because they're, they're not spread apart at all. That's what quantization of the wrong value does. But I'm now going to go in and just, just change those few notes um, because I can still do that after I've quantized. So you can see me doing it here. I'm also making sure that the notes are not being played at the same time because there's a flautist a flute player, you can only play one note. Let's listen to it again. You notice as I go along, I'm always listening to it, always picking out the details. Can I hear those individual notes? Are some of them too loud, too soft? I'm thinking about the expression of the phrase. Get a smooth phrase, you need to have control over every note. You find as a general rule, the ones that fall on beat one tend to feel like they should be slightly louder than the others. next um, uh, little ornament that I've put in there. There we 
go, I think we're done with that. So let's have a listen all the way through. Okay, so that's just an example of mastering there. You don't have to do exactly what I've done there, and I'd, I'd encourage you not to. I want you to use your own ideas. Um, the most important things are the flow, so the fluency between the sections. Can you make it all work as if it's one piece? Um, can you come up with that contrast um, between the, the loud section and the soft, peaceful section as well? That's, uh, that's really, really important. Um, so... Um, Somebody asked me a question about, uh, well, how do you know which notes to write? Well, um, from what you've learned earlier on in this project, you've learned a melody and you've learned some harmony and you've seen how they fit together. You actually don't need any more musical material than that. Um, you noticed in that first section there, I just had the chords, just had the harmony playing back. So I didn't even need the melody. Then I introduced the melody with the harmony in a different way without this kind of regular uh, repeating quavers um, and then uh, and then I went back into my big section later so I, I don't need to write new melodies or new material or new patterns um, you can if you want of course you can if you want but there's not an expectation on this project because remember this is year eight music and uh, so I, I, it's very important I've given you resources musical resources that you can use and see what you can create with it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do. Okay.